right, it's coming up to the hour to start on the classes. Now, because I don't have a chat window, sorry about it, folks, can't help it. I can still see you on the other computer. As soon as I show you how to do the loop tatted rings, then we'll go question and answer. And then we're going to move on to adding our elements to a card. And the best, best methods I have found to use on paper with your tatting so that it doesn't destroy your tatting. Okay? So with that, I'm going to go to the down shot and we're going to get started on this loop tatted split ring. So let me get that going. All right. This is the tulip pattern we've been working on, right? Now, we did the tulip head. We've done the stem. Now, we've got these leaves that have to come off on both sides. Now, these are loop tatted split rings that run up through the side. Okay, Teresa, thank you. So, with that said, here is our little sample where we stopped. As you can see, let me zoom in just a hair. As you can see, right here, we have a little tiny pico. There is another one right here. Okay? So, for this next step, you're going to need your two shuttles, your tails intact, and voila, our little pick, okay? Because the pick off the shuttles won't fit in these little tiny picos. So you're going to need your tiny crochet hook, okay? So let's get on with it. Now, this is the front side because the bigger leaf or petal of the tulip would sit in the back. So the first one we're going to do is this one right here and the pattern itself calls let me get all my threads untwisted here for three join at the pico three split ring eight okay and this is going to be a loop tatted split ring and when we get to the end you're only going to have one tail to have to hide in in here and you can do it a multitude of ways whatever is comfortable for you you can use it with a floss threader and pull the tail back through that last split ring or you can sew them in it's up to you okay so let's get started doing this so the first part of this split ring we're going to do three double stitches you want them to set as close to that stem as possible. So shove it up there real close, pull it tight. Then come back with your second half of that stitch. And we're going to put the other two in. Yeah, I missed my hand. And there's three double stitches. Everybody see that? Our three double stitches. Let me come up a little closer. Adjust. You see your three double stitches. Now, I'm going to leave this sit here so you can see I'm joining this. We're going to take our hook. We're going to go down in through that little tiny pico. Make sure you don't split the ply in this pico. Because when you go to pull this, peak, this core thread through, you're going to have a problem. It's going to rip your pico. So, take it. Go up through, grab that thread, and pull it up. Let me get back in shot. You're going to pull that pico up. Hook that on your finger. And then we're going to run that shuttle up and do an up join. Got it? Now, it says three more double stitches before the split. 
So let's put in the other three. That's one, two, and three. Now here comes the split. To do this, you want to pull off a lot of thread off your shuttle. Okay? Once you do that, you throw that shuttle behind you. Get it out of your way. You take this loop of thread. You see it? Can everybody see it? Let me move that shuttle out of the way. Can you all see that? You're going to lay that loop of thread up there beside this other half of this loop. We want to open that ring up because we've got to put in eight double stitches using this loop of thread. So we're going to go same thing, first half, second half, eight times to make eight double stitches. So that's one, I can get my fingernails to work, cooperate. Two, yes, they got to be cut off. Three, four, five. Six. If your ring starts to getting a little tight, make sure you pull a finger out. Your loom. If you see that you need more thread here, you want to pull thread from this shuttle. Okay, the one that's crossed our hand. So you'll have to find which thread pulls this shuttle thread. So you just grab it. You want to open it up, okay, and you just grab. If it pulls from this thread, you're okay, but if it pulls from down here, you're closing this ring. We're not ready for that, okay? So now we've got one, two, three, four, five, six double stitches. seven, and here comes the eight. Now, what are we going to do? We're going to close that ring. How are we going to close that ring? You see this shuttle? We're not touching it yet. We're going to find the thread. Get it twist, untwisted. You see how I've got it untwisted here? Find the thread that starts to close the ring. Pull one half of that thread or the other, and then test the water. If it's pulling from the shuttle, you've grabbed the wrong side. Pull from the other way. And it'll start closing that ring. See it closing? Keep that ring in the pinch. Do not let it slip out of the pinch. Because if you do, you're going to mess things up. You've got to keep that ring in position. Now, if you look, that ring has a flat side. You see it? You want it more of a ring. So you take your nail run it between your stitches. If you don't have a fingernail, you can rub it between your fingers and make your ring a round ring. Okay? See how I've done that? I've softened the curve. Now, what next? We've got this long loop here. What are we going to do with that loop? Well, because if we go like a normal loop tatted ring 
if we go across and grab this shuttle, we're going to lock up at this Pico join. We don't want to do that. So what we're going to use to lock this ring in place is we are going to pull our tails and this other shuttle through that loop. And we're going to catch it at the bottom of that ring when we close this ring. So, grab our shuttle and let's begin to close that ring all the way. You see how the thread behind me is going away. It's because I am pulling that all up and tightening everything up. Okay? If it should get twisted sistered on you, straighten it up. Keep pulling. But you want to make sure those tails are caught up in that. That will hold this ring in place. Because of the way it is tatted, if you do not trap your thread at the base, you're just going to pull that ring loose. There's not going to be no more ring. You'll have to redo everything. And when you're done, again, it's going to get a little wonky, but it is taking on the leaf shape. Can y'all see that? Hi, Aurora. Everybody see the leaf shape? It keeps wanting to flip on me. Quit flipping. Y'all see it? It's got a point to it up here, like a leaf would, coming to a point. So, now we're going to move on because you've got more loop tatted rings to work with. Okay, so now here we go. We're going to do the second ring, which is six split six. All right, wrap our hand, tighten up our shuttle so we can work with it. Because we got, had all that extra thread that we had pulled out to do the loop tatted split ring. The first half is done like a normal split ring. The second half is done using the thread off the shuttle in a loop form. Does everybody understand that? Alright, so now we're going to put in six more double stitches. And you want them to sit right up next to this last leaf. So, one, we place that first one in position. We turn our work so it all lays so that it goes the re direct route, okay, that it's supposed to. So, there's our first double stitch. And as you can see, bring it up and let it focus. Maybe I'm too close. There we go. It's right up next to this other ring. Okay? So let's put in five more. There's two, three, four, and five. Okay, so we got our first five double stitches. Again, Pull off a bunch of thread. See, we got a bunch of thread. There's our shuttle. Open our ring up. Toss that shuttle behind our hand. The reason we toss it behind the hand is to get it out of the way. Okay? Because we are not working with the shuttle. We're working with this loop of thread. Now, same as before. We're going to put in six double stitches. First half, second half. You do not do rods on this technique. Okay, that's one. Two. Three. Now, should your thread here, get all wonky and you get extra thread up here, you can always pull the thread and straighten it out. But as with all tatting techniques, it takes practice. I don't expect you to know exactly how to do this first time around. Okay? 
with practice makes perfect. So we got four. Here's the fifth one. I'm going to pull my finger out to give myself some more room in the ring. That's five. Number six coming in on the tail end here. There's the first half, and here is the second half. There. Can you see how this is done? Try to look past my little bruise. I ain't even going to explain how that happened. Me and a pair of wire cutters didn't get along. So, you've got your six on this side, your six on this side. Here is your split. Okay? So, the next thing we want to do is find where which side closes that ring. But we're not going to close it this time. This is coming from the shuttle. This one is coming from the ring. So what are we going to do? We're going to reach across and grab our shuttle. We're going to drop it in. Okay? Now. Oh, excuse me. we got to close that ring, don't we? Yes, I totally, totally, totally forgot about that. Let's close the ring. Train of thought. Back up. Put it in reverse. Let's go again. We're closing the ring. Gonna shut it up right there. Come on. There we go. Helps not to have real twisted threads. Okay. Now, drop that shuttle through that loop. Okay? And you want to work this loop down over this ring so that it lays around that ring. And you'll have to fiddle with it till you can get everything positioned right. Okay? Somehow or another, that just got twisted sistered on me. Because this loop is going to catch the base of that ring. Okay? Back here. There we go. It got all twisted up. Now it's not so twisted up. So, we take that, we drop it down the base. Okay? And you start closing that ring. You don't worry about catching those tails on this second ring. All you're doing is catching the base of this thread. That's all. Okay. And that did not close right. It's just jumped up in there. Something fierce. That it did. And these are a pain to take out. Trust me. It locked up. Come on, baby girl. Yeah, I'm going to stretch that ring something bad. And it does that. They're a great technique, but you got to take pains and lots and lots of patience with them. Let me get my little fun tool. Open that ring back up. Remember these, the hackle pliers? That's why I say get you a set. Because times like this, and I could very well possibly break this thread. If I do, it's okay. Because this is not the final piece. There we go. It's starting to slip. Come on. Slide, baby, slide. We just need enough gap for it to get the shuttle through. And you don't want to put too much pressure on it with the hackle pliers. Because you see how it twisted? See how my thread is twisted on there? 
We don't want that. Let's pull it out. And there we go. You got a twisted sister. Now, you can adjust your ring. Pinch it up, run your fingernail through it, do what you got to do to fix your ring. Okay? Because I had to pull it out, we got a little bit of a gap, but that's okay. But you see how it closed up, and that ring caught here at the base so that it would lock all this in. Got it? So, moving on. Okay? Now, as you can see, here's what... I didn't finish it out completely. Okay? I will on the final product. But you can see. Here's ring one. Here's ring two. And then you continue on. And what you're going to have is this one little bitty thread to hide. Now... You've got this other side to do. Guess what you're going to do? Rotate your work over. Because your Pico is sitting right there for you to join. Okay? Can you see it? That's where we're going to join. And you do the same thing on this side that you did on the opposite side. Okay? So... On the pattern, she has us working the 8 and the 6, okay? And she says it's joining here between. Really, it doesn't lay that leaf like it should when you join, just like a regular join. Close the ring and join. So on this one, the best way I found to do this half was to reverse the work, tat it in rods, join here, okay, and grab the core thread. Then do the finished side. So let's put in eight double stitches. No, I didn't do rods. But you can if you want it all facing forward. In this pattern, it really doesn't matter. Okay, because it is a flower. So we got four, five, six, seven, and eight. Now, because I turned it, those tails back, because I turned my work over and reversed my work, it puts my Pico here where it's easier to join here. Okay? So, we're going to go through that Pico. Grab it. Got it. And we are going to join. Come up with an up join. Okay? Lay that there. And we're going to do the other six. One. Two, three, four, five, and six. Now, we close that ring. We can catch those tails up in that if we choose to. Okay? Or not. It's up to the tatter. In her directions, I believe she says to catch the tails. Like I said, it's up to the tatter. So, here we go. Let me turn it over on the front side and lay that ring into the right position. So you can see. There is the start. Okay? Now, this is a split ring. But if you see the photograph she's got, going by your photographs, that is why it is so imperative to get pictures with your patterns. She's got these rings. See how they're laying right on top of each other? This one here 
lace off to the side. They're all different. Okay, I'm off the map here. Okay, see how they're all different? It's to each tatter. How do you want your stems to lay? How do you want these leaves to go? You can do starting with just a regular ring. And since the tail is down here, you can pull it in tight and bring that up as a split ring and have it curved to come out like this. So it's up to you. How do you want to do it? All these will be single shuttle split rings, just like over here. But this join is the one that is difficult to accomplish because you're working behind yourself. So, as with all tatting, make it your own. You can change the pattern to work to your benefit or work it to where you're just getting frustrated. It's up to you. But a single shuttle split ring on a pattern like this will leave you with one tail and whatever to tat up. Has everybody got that? Do I need to show you how to do Do I need to show you how to do a single shuttle split ring just by itself? Thank you, Teresa Woods. I was reading. Sorry. I was reading all the comments. So, everybody got it? If there's no questions, let me go back up to face forward. Alright, any questions? <coughs> What's your question, Laurel? Y'all have to excuse my husband. He's on a conference call. And he talks loud because he's got headphones on. And he thinks nobody can hear him. Yeah, everybody can hear him. So, doesn't look like there's any questions. So, we're going to move on to the fun stuff. We got our card. We got our little tidbits. Okay, here's our little card. Okay, here's some tidbits. Okay, little tidbits. We're going to put on this card. Now, first things first. Before you put tatting on any kind of paper, make sure it is acid-free paper. Reason being, with time, the non-acid-free paper will leach the color from your tatting. It will eat your tatting, okay, because it's got acids in it. When paper is made, it creates an acid. It's a long story, and we're not going to go into that because we're not in science lab, okay? We're in tatting class. But make sure you're using acid-free paper. Your glues, whatever you use, make sure it's for fabric, thread, stuff like that. If you want it to be removable, you see this? Let me get that closer. This is double-sided tape. Now, this tape has a lot of uses, okay? You know the spaghetti straps that some girls wear and they don't want their bras to show? Run a piece of this across the spaghetti strap and ain't going nowhere, okay? You can also use a tape runner, okay? It looks like this. Let me open the cap. And you just run it along your paper. Makes it sticky, but you can remove it, all right? Another thing, bet y'all don't know what this is. Bet you don't. This is what scrapbookers use. This is acid-free tape. This is how they mount photos. Okay? But you can stick tatting to it 
and it is removable. And this, it comes, you see how small this is? This is an eighth of an inch. And you can get it up to an inch and a half if you need something that big. Okay? It comes in a variety of sizes, but it is acid-free. This is for non-permanent adhesion. Okay? And I'll demonstrate on the card how all this looks. Okay? So then we have these little fun bits of joy. Fabri-Tac and Beacons. Let me get it around that. Three in one. Both of these are designed to glue fabric to paper. It's quick drying, okay? In about a minute, it you can just do whatever you want. I would give it a good 20 minutes to full dry, okay? So when you put it down, it's not going to slip and slide. So if you're doing uh, something that's going to be stacked pieces, this is a great thing because nothing shifts, okay? But both of these, they're a little pricey, but a little dab will go a long way, okay? So, these are acid-free glues, all right? And these are acid-free double-sided tapes. That is what you want to use on your acid-free cardstock. When you buy it, it will say that it's acid-free. You can get it, instead of buying reams of it, you can get it sheet by sheet. Okay? Um, it's better if you use acid-free because it will last forever. Okay? It won't deteriorate over time. Uh, Hallmark uses acid-free cardstock for all of their cards. That's why 50 years from now, your Hallmark card is Deal like it was bought yesterday. Maybe a little bit yellowed from age, but it's still as sturdy as the day you bought it. So, now we're going to go down shot, and I'm going to show you how to mount these, both permanently as well as non-permanent. Okay, let's start with our little tree. You see we've got tails here, okay? And we have knotted them off. So, what are we going to do? We're going to cut those tails back. It's fine. Okay? Because it's going to be hidden behind our other work. So move them tails out of the way. This we're going to put on here in a non-permanent way. Now, my favorite tools to use are... The scrapbooking tape, an X-Acto knife. It makes it easier. Trust me, I'll show you. And a bone folder. Okay? Bone folders are great. So, here's what we're going to do. We find the front of our tree. We want all of our double stitches on our rings, because if you tat traditional, everything will be backwards on your picots. So, you want to make sure all your double stitches are facing forward. This is the front. Now, we're going to put a piece of tape on the back of that little tree. So, that's why I'm using this small tape, because it will hide behind it without being seen or give a glare. Exacto knife. Let me show you here, ladies. Be careful with your exacto knives. Well, the blade came out. You don't want to cut yourself with your exacto knife. Because if you cut yourself with your ex give me my finger back, dude. If you cut yourself with your exacto knife, you'll wish you hadn't. It's worse than a razor cut. Okay? So you can tell I use mine a lot. Alright, now, exacto knife. You lay this X-Acto knife right on where you want that tape to cut. Pull the paper backwards. Done. Okay, now get your tape out of the way. Because you don't want to tape the tree leaves. Okay? Guess what this is for? Burnishing that down on the tatting so it sticks. 
The next thing you want to do is peel this paper up gently. Your tape should be stuck to your tree. And you can tell when you start peeling it backwards if it is or not. Let me get it up here where I can see. It didn't burnish enough, so let's try this end and see if we can get it to do it. Y'all can see me working here, can't you? That one split. This smaller tape is hard to work with. I won't lie to you. Really need binocular vision. But you can see how it's splitting. So what is your major malfunction junction? Let me cut that off. Yeah, I used my thread scissors to cut that off. Only because I got 15 pair. There we go. We got it. Now, peel that paper back. See, you can't even see that tape. Let me get it up there. You can't even see it. You see the shine, but you don't see the tape. Now, you just stick that little baby down there. And you say, okay, do I like that? Maybe. Maybe not. Well, let's move it. It will leave the tape there. It will come back up. Okay? But it makes it removable for who you're giving the card to. So that they can take this off and trim a towel, a pocket on a dress or a shirt. You know, it makes it removable. So, now, we have our butterfly. We did in beginner class. This one here, we're going to use our glue with. And my glues, I keep in bottles. Because I use these a lot, and these are resealable, so you don't have the bubble up. Fabri-Tac will bubble over. This is a cake decorating tool. We're like tatters, okay? We use all kinds of tools. So, it keeps the glue from bubbling up and over. So, this is a permanent fixture. We want this stuck on here to where it doesn't come off. So, we get our glue to come down. This is Fabri-Tac we're using. And you see, it's slow as molasses. You can use, if it gets too thick in your bottle, you can use nail polish to thin it out. Okay. Put a little glue on it. It doesn't take much. You just want to stick it down. Get our little antennas out of the way. And we're going to put our butterfly safe. How about right there? And then you just add Fabri-Tac wherever you need a little swatch to glue it down. Okay. Now, handy little tip and trick here. Okay, we got our butterfly glued down. And as you can see, it's glued. It's stuck. So, now, we get glue on your hands. Right? And you're sticky everywhere. Let me show you something. These aren't for babies' bottoms only. This is baby wipes. They will remove that glue right off your hands without a problem. I have no sticky residue. Any kind of glue, art glue, okay, this will remove it. However, the Fabri-Tac, because it is a silicone-based, and it has acetone in it, it will eat up your manicure. Warning ahead of time. So if you pay a chunk of money, wear rubber gloves if you're going to use Fabri-Tac. Okay? So, we now have our tree 
mounted and we have our butterfly and as you can see I'm shaking I'm a rattling they're not going nowhere okay when we put these in a card they're not going to slip off okay no I don't have my leaf trees mounted at the top you can put you a little piece of tape larger size whatever but when you slip it in the card it'll lay flat and it won't come off it won't when the postman's juggling it down the road, it's not coming off. But whoever gets the card can peel this off. This, they have to cut out. It's not coming off. Once the fabric tack is glued, it, it's glued. It's not going nowhere. Okay? So they'll have to take this off by cutting it. Cutting the paper around it. But that's okay. They can use it, make a paper clip for a bookmark or whatever. Okay, so with that said, do we have any questions in regards to how to mount this on our cards? Aurora, you can get those at that kind of tape from Amazon. You can buy a whole pack of that kind of tape really cheap, the double back. I buy, it's a no-name brand, and it works just as good as score tape. This is called score tape, and it's because scrapbookers use it. But this is the same tape. I can show you. This is the same double back tape. In fact, I'll cut a piece and show you right here on the paper. You stick it down. I stuck it on there and I'll show you. Get it up here where you can see. As you can see on the card, try to get it to where it doesn't glare. Here is the paper tabby. And then you've got the sticky tape right there. Alright? Yeah, this ain't the card that's going to Georgia, folks. I'm working on the one for her. <coughs> but it will have all the elements. So, yeah, the embroidery scissors will work as well as the knife. The thing of it is, uh, this double back tape, if it gets on the blades of your embroidery scissors, you can ruin your embroidery scissors. So, if you get a good pair that you don't want to let go, I don't advise using it. Because, also, this has a paper cover. Cutting paper with your scissors dulls on. And with tatting, you want sharp scissors to cut those ends real close to your work without cutting your work. And if you dull the scissors, you take that chance. Okay? Okay, Jilly. Yes, at the bottom of this video, I will list all the items that I have used on this card. And they will have links to Amazon. I do most of my shopping through Amazon. Okay, yeah, I'm an avid supporter of Amazon. <laughs> Only because I live in a small town and we got nowhere to shop. Um, but... You can also purchase this at Michael's. You can purchase it at Hobby Lobby. Any craft store will carry these items. I will just share the link. And I price shop. Okay. I buy from several different craft suppliers. And I go for the best bang for my buck. And I always buy bulk because I use so much. So... Like I said, I will link to Amazon to show you where you can get it. And Amazon's worldwide. Okay? But you once you see what you're looking for, you can pretty much find it in your local craft shops. Okay? Not a problem, Jilly. Not a problem. Is there any other questions from anybody? 
Sorry, I have to keep looking over there. That's my talk. <laughs> Y'all just have to deal with it this time. Don't ask me what I did. I moved the mouse when I clicked, and it just closed it. Any questions from anybody? Yeah, those are, in fact, this one here was a Dollar Tree X-Acto knife. And the blades that they carry fit any X-Acto knife you've got. It's just, the only thing is, the cap is a little loose. And this thing doesn't stay tight. But you need, you can't glue it. Because if you glue it, then you can't open it and change the blade. Be careful with these, okay? One side sharp. This is the dull side. Remember, the sharp side can slice you. I have literally sliced off a fingernail. Okay, they are extremely sharp. So please, 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 I'm giving you fair warning. Be careful with the X-Acto knife. Yeah, Shauna, I link to those. You can get those with Amazon as well. And the ones that look like this cost a little more, but they have some that are more elongated on the sides here. And they're like $6. Not bad at all. Most of your fishing stores should have it because it's a fishing thing. They use it to tie their uh, flies with, from what I understand. It's a fly tie thing. I don't fish, can you tell? I used to have baby fish. I can't. I don't even like to eat fish because I have baby fish. Bye, Lucy. Yeah, especially Amazon. Amazon's got everything. I mean, I don't care what you go to look for. They got it. So, any other questions on this before I issue your homework for tonight and give you an update? Last call for questions. All right. Um, updates on the class after I give you homework. Homework. Attach your tatting, okay? Because if you take the tat exam, this is something you'll need to know how to attach, attach your tatting, okay? The tat exam is put out through Tatters Across Time. Yes, you can get a master's degree in tatting, and they offer it as well as IOLI, International Organization of Lace Makers. So, if you are going to do the test, tatting test. You will need the double back tape for that because they have to take the tatting off and examine your work and tell you how good you did or how bad you did. So, you need to know that. I want to see your little cards. I want to see your tatting attached to something. Okay? That's your homework. Show me a finished result. Something you designed. Even if all it is is a picture you're going to hang on the wall or put on your desk, but I want to see you proudly display your tatting. The card that's going to Georgia with all the stuff, because she's seeing your homework. Trust me, she's seeing your homework, and she's very proud of all of you, okay? So, the card I'm going to send to her will have samples of all the patterns we've done for class this six weeks. Okay, and then I'm going to send it to her, her, and that will be her little gift from the class. All right, next, um, updates. Monday, next week, it is drawing time for that $50 gift card that's going out. All right, I want you all to see. The number of entries in homework. Y'all see this? It started off in this bucket. It got full. It overflowed. So we had to go to the box. 
box. So now it's in a box. Come Monday, we will have a live drawing. So the winner will be announced Monday. Whoever wins it, I will contact you for information on how to get the gift card to you. If it's through mail or email, either way. And I will tell you who you will be getting the card from. Okay, it will be a tatting supplier. Either tatting corner or handy hands. Okay, so that's Monday next week. I'm also going to go over next week everything that's going on with the classes this summer. Yay! We're going to have not one, not two, not three, but four special classes for you guys. These special classes could last up to two whole hours. All right? Because they're going to be designed so that you get to do a completed project in one sitting with your teacher. Okay? So it could run over two hours. So plan for an eventful, fun field day. I will give you the dates on those. Also this summer, the teachers will be sending out, each teacher will send out once a month, a pattern for you to tap on your own. Then if you choose to turn it in for homework, that's fine because at the end of summer, when classes return in September, we're going to hold another drawing for homework submissions. Now, how cool is that? I mean, y'all are y'all going to win big time, all right? Um, but yeah, you're going to get the four classes this summer. They're special classes. Okay, you're also going to get a total of four extra patterns a month. One from each teacher sent out to you all as a group. You choose whether you want to tat it or if it's above your skill level. If it is, you can contact us during the summer. We will continue to answer email. It's just the classrooms will be closed. Okay, but we're not going to be as Johnny on the spot over the summer because there are conventions we will be attending. We will still do our own vacation times, things such as that. So know that we will get back to you as soon as possible. One of us will. All four of us won't be taking a vacation at the same time unless we're all at the convention. Make sure if you're going to Tat Days this year, Palmetto Tat Tatting Guild is having their Tat Days August the 26th through the 29th. Okay, it is the best three days you will ever have in your life going to one of these conventions. And Palmetto's is one of the largest, aside from IOLI. Um, I suggest if you're going to go Go and enjoy yourself. There will be vending. There will be prizes. There will be education. And there will be fun. We have auctions and all kinds of goodies going on. So if you're going, registration right now goes through July the 10th, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong, Teresa. Teresa Orn or Teresa Woods, when is the last day for registration for TAT Days? Anybody? Anybody get out? So it is July the 10th, Teresa. What glue? I would use Beacons 3-in-1. You can get this at Walmart. Or Fabri-Tac. You can get that at Walmart as well. Now if you're going to uh, Amazon, you got to buy three of them. 
Why? I don't know. But I use so much of it, I buy more than three. So, but if you just want the one bottle to attach your tatting, which just goes a long way, <coughs> just go to Walmart and you can get it. Both of them are available at Walmart, um, Hobby Lobby, Michaels, uh, any fabric store will have those because that's what it's designed for. Okay, July the 10th, last day for registration on Tat Days. If you're going, I will see you there. Yes, I will be there. Pam will be there. And Sue and Kay will be at Tat Days. So you all will get to meet us face to face, person to person. And we can sp spend a little time with you chit-chatting. And if you need help further with your tatting techniques, just ask us. We're more than happy to help. There are many tatters. Many well-known tatters going to be there as well. So, mark your calendar, make your reservation, and I'll see you at Tad Days. All right, if that's all there is, that's all I have for today. I hope you all have a wonderful day today. I know mine is better than it was this time last week. Lots better. Um, I'll see you Monday. Same time, same place. Until then, happy tatting.